All right, Shalom. Back again, part two. All right. All right. So I'm going to start in Deuteronomy. All right. And so sometimes we can be given <clears throat> um, a wrong sign. All right. You got to look for the right sign. And it's all about what the books say, what the words say. And Josephus, book six. No, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, book six, chapter five. All right. And, um, and, um, I might start at three. I'm just thinking real quick. The chapter summary it says the great distress that the Jews were in upon the conflagration of the holy house concerning a false prophet and the signs that preceded the destruction. All right. But first, you know, let's talk about an example of sign, a mark. A sigil, all right, or a symbol, all right. Um, what's going on in the world? If people ain't careful, it's gonna be interesting. So, uh. We got to look for our son. America, not, I'm not with Babylon, America. I'm not with them. But I'm saying righteous got to look for their sign. And take the mark of the Most High. As believing on the Most High. Believing his son died, rose again. Being uh, baptized. Laying on hands. And speaking in different languages. Uh, prophesying. And speaking on the judgment, water baptism. Um, we got to know when to go up, when not to go up. That's a decision that's going to be made between um, God can make God, Babylon, these current presidents and all that. They they got to they gotta ask themselves, should they go up? Should we go up to war? So if the Elohim, the Most High, is not with you, you should not go up. You should not go nowhere. You should stand still, see the salvation of the Lord, and do not be moved. But if Most High say move, you should move. Right? So you got to know. You got to be able to hear the Most High's voice. Because there's no salvation without the Most High, the Haya, the Yah, Yahuwah, whatever you call them. The Most High Power, the Elohim, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Spirits. There's no victory, no salvation without Yeshia, the Anointed, the Messiah. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Joshua, Yehoshua, Yahushai, Yasha. Okay. And so you don't want to see the wrong sign. All right. And we know. Uh, Jonah, if Jonah says a sign will not be given to them. But this, right? And you know that. You can grab that, think about it, meditate on it. Um, the 
that's what the nations got to ask themselves. Should they go up? Because if the Most High is not with you, you should not move. So, got a couple verses here. Deuteron Deuteronomy 1.28. Whether shall we go up? Should we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. Shemaim. And how at, moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. We also seen the sons of Anakim there. Mm -hmm. Should we go up? Judges 1 and 2. And the Most High said, Judah shall go up. Behold, look, I have delivered, I have given the land into his hand. All right. Alright. Uh, 2 Samuel 5 19. And David inquired, he asked of the Most High, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Most High said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtlessly give or save, spare the Philistines. I'll give the Philistines into your hand, your power. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Genesis, Genesis 35 and 1. And the Most High said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and live there, and make there an altar unto the Most High that appeared unto you. When you fled us from the face of Esau, your brother. Mm -hmm. Judges uh, 2018. And the children of Israel arose. They got up and went up to the house of the Most High and asked, Counsel to ask for advice on the Most High, and said, "Which of you, or which of us, shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin?" And the Most High said, "Judah shall go up first." All right, and. Uh, I think that's all I have for right now. Should we go up? I mean, should should I go up? As I would say. Uh, Samuel 5.23 And so David inquired of the Most High who answered, Do not march straight up about um, I'm sorry, do not march straight up, but circle around behind them and attack them, attack them in the front of the balsam trees. Mm -hmm. First Samuel 23, 2. Therefore David inquired of the Most High, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the second Samuel 2 and 1. And it came to pass after this that David asked the Most High, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Most High said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said unto Hebron. Alright. We should wait on the Most High. You should not go up unless the Most High 
uh, 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 say go up. Right? Um, 1 Samuel 30 and 8. Um, and David asked at the Most High, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. You know the examples if you go out to this battle without the Most High. You go to, to any battle without the Most High on your side. You're losing. Jew or Gentile. Okay. So now, let's get this Josephus. All right. And um, I want this particular sign real quick. Okay. This particular sign. And then, and then we're going to go back. It says, now there was a star resembling a sword. There was a star resembling, was similar, looking at like a sword, which stood over the city and a comet that continued a whole year. A comet that continued a whole year. Josephus in the notes means that this star was different from the comet which lasted a whole year. All right. Then also before the Jews' rebellion and before those commotions which preceded the war, when the people were coming in great crowds to the Feast of Unleavened Bread on the eighth day, of the month Xanthicus, Nisan. And at the ninth hour of the night, so great a light shone around the altar of the holy house that it appeared to be bright daytime, which light lasted for an half an hour. All right, that light lasted for a half, a, a half an hour. All right. The Cyril Macedonian monks Antichus for the Jewish month Nisan, that this eighth, or uh, Nisephorus, read it, this ninth of Xanticus or Nisan, was almost a week before the Passover on the 14th, about which time we learn from St. John that many used to go out of the country to Jerusalem to purify themselves. John 11, 5, 5, 55, with John 12 and 1. Uh, in agreement with Josephus, also 5, 3, 1. And it might, be what, it might well be that in the sight of these, this extraordinary light uh, might appear. All right. So... It's important that the seers can see the watchmen. All right. Some people can't see. And some people took that as a good sign. I'm going to read a little bit about the holy city. It says, while the holy city, so chapter 5, verse, uh, paragraph 1, while the holy house was on fire, Everything was plundered, robbed, that came to hand. And 10,000 of those that were caught were slain, killed. Nor was there a commiseration of any age or any reverence of gravity. But children and old men and profane persons and priests were all killed, slain in the same manner. So that this war went round all sorts of men and brought them to destruction. And as well, those that made supplication prayers for their lives as those that defend themselves by fighting. The flame was also carried a long way and made an echo together with the groans of those that were killed 
and because the, this hill was high and the works at the temple was very great, one would have thought that the whole city had been on fire, nor can one imagine anything either greater or more terrible than this noise. For there was at once a shout of Roman legions who were marching all together, and a sad noise of the revolters who were now surrounded with fire and sword. The people also that were left above were beaten back upon the enemy and under a great consternation and made sad moans at the disaster they were under. The crowd also that was in the city joined in this outcry with those that were upon the hill and besides many of those that were worn away by the famine and their mouths almost closed when they saw the fire of the holy house. They exerted their utmost strength and broke out into groans and outcries. <laughs> Again. All right. And so I'm going to leave it there. All right. Now. I'm in six, five. And verse 285. It says, A false prophet was the occasion, was the event of these people's destruction. A false prophet was the reason of the people's destruction. All right? Who had made a publication, a public proclamation, he made a public announcement like a newscaster, like social media, post in the city that very day, he announced it that very day, the hour, that the Most High commanded them to get up upon the temple and that there they should receive miraculous signs, marks, sigils, symbols, examples of their deliverance protection, safety, salvation. Now, there was then a great number of false prophets. There are many false prophets as well. Suborned by the tyrants. They were purchased by the tyrants. All right, the wicked Jewish Herod Edomites um Uh, 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 rich tyrants, all right, politicians, those in high places, uh, um, Pharisee leaders, to impose upon the people. They was paid to be imposed upon the people. He was false apostate preachers, pastors, that were paid for the money bag. They was with church and state. It was used to get your vote. It was used to do Planned Parenthood with Martha Singer. Connected with the Pope. With the Masons. All right. Gatekeepers. Black Blue Lay. White Blue Lay. All right. Catholic Church. All the denominations that you can think of. All right. Kenneth Copeland. All, right. all these other people uh, 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 worshiping um, uh, 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 Tammuz, uh, making the people to sin, making merchandise of the people, robbing the widow, robbing the homeless, robbing the poor, um, taking the tithes of the Levites. Telling you that the church need a building fund and never fixing the building. All right. Praising women. Committing adultery. Uh, molesting children in the church. Doing Halloween in the church. 
keeping Christmas in the church. Telling you this is the reason for the season. All right. Doing the things that Christ hated by having a woman in authority in the church over the men, allowing homosexuality in the church, voting for laws that is against the scripture under 501c3, under Caesar's foot. Take a jab for the money bag. Come in any type of way. Come to church. Um, all things are clean. Not making a difference between the clean and unclean. So, a great number of false prophets hired by the tyrants to impose upon the people. To influence the people. To put the people in fear. Um, who denounced this to them. Who announced this to them. That they should wait for deliverance from the Most High. Science will come up with the answer. Um, if you sow a seed, deliverance is going to come. Alright. So it says that they should wait for deliverance from the Most High. And this was in order to keep them from deserting Caesar, uh, um, the governments. It was to keep them from deserting, to keep them in a controlled population, from moving around, leaving the country, passports, passports. Um, Martial law, uh, keep the sheep in one place. Just keep raping them, keep taking their money. All right, missionaries. In order to keep them from deserting, fleeing, and that they might be buoyed up above fear and care and care by such hopes. Right, that they're going to be delivered uh, by a rapture before the tribulation. Now, a man that is in adversity does easily comply. Those that are in trouble and adversity, affliction, tribulation, does easily comply to the CDC. Easily comply to other gods, easily comply to Hasatan, easily comply to the laws of the land, but not the laws of the Most High. Easily comply with such promises of uh, that they're going to be delivered. Um, if you get on my land. You build up my earthly kingdom. But when such a seducer makes him believe that he shall be delivered from these miseries which oppress him, the gas is so high. Vote for Biden. Keep voting for him. Uh, vote for this one. Vote for that one. He's going to deliver you. You're going to be spared from those miseries which, which oppress him. Then it is e then it is that the patient is full of hopes of such deliverance. Those that are patient, they'll be uh, in full belief of such deliverance. So they pay these false prophets to do uh, to stand for these political agendas. That are against God's people. All right. Take a medical procedure 
Uh, anyway. Now, were the miserable people persuaded, the miserable people persuaded, they was um, seduced, influenced by these deceivers, false prophets, and such as uh, belied the most belied the most high himself while they did not attend nor give credit honor respect glory worship or credit to the signs that were so evident that they didn't give credit to the signs that were true that was so evident that we are the children of Israel, that we suffer the curses, um, that there's herd immunity, that um, this person's unfit to be the president, um, so many other things, signs that were so evident and did so plainly foretell the future destruction. All right, but like men infatuated without either eyes to see because they're blind or minds to consider because they don't think and did not regard, they did not care the denunciations that the Most High made to them. To, uh, announcements, the proclamations, the declarations that the one that be who he be, I am, Yea, Asha, Yea, Ahaya, made to them. So there was a star resembling a sword, a weapon, which stood over the city and a comet that contained Continued a whole year. So also before the Jews rebellion, the revolt, and before those commotions, these things happened, which pre preceded the war. When the people will come in great crowds to the feast of unleavened bread on the eighth day of the month, Nisan, and at the ninth hour of the night, so great a light shone around the altar. And the holy house that it appeared to be bright daytime which light lasted for half an hour this light seemed to be a good sign to the unskillful to the what the unskillful the unlearned the untrained but was so interpreted by the sacred scribes as to pretend those events that followed immediately upon it. At the same festival, also a heifer, we ain't talking about the red heifer, a heifer, a cow, as she was led by the high priest to be sacrificed, brought out a lamb. A heifer, a cow, brought forth a lamb in the middle of the temple, in the midst of of the house they still didn't see that signs however the eastern gate of the inner temple says so the inner court of the temple which was of brass and vastly heavy and had been with difficulty shut closed by 20 men and rested upon a basis armed with iron and had bolts fastened very deep into the firm floor which was they're made of one entire stone and was seen to be open of its own accord by itself own will about the sixth hour of the night the door the gate open at the sixth hour of the night now the now those that kept watch in the temple came hereupon running to the captain of the temple the leader of the church and told him of it who then came up there and not without great difficulty was able to shut the gate again. This also appeared to the vulgar to be to be a very happy prodigy. 
right? They thought it to be a very happy prodigy, protege, a, a sign, symbol, a mark, example, as if the Most High did thereby open them the gates of happiness. That's what they took it for. This is the gates of happiness because the gate opened by itself. You better be careful how you discern. But the men of learning understood it, that the security of the holy house was dissolved. The uh, sages, the wise men, the children of Israel that was given the oracles of God that had the Ruach, they said um, that the security of the holy house was dissolved. It was removed on its own accord own will and that the gate was opened for the advantage of their enemies that was the creator letting them know that he's going to open the gate for the enemy to do what needs to be done um, so these publicly declared the sages the wise men declared that the signal foreshadowed the desolation that was coming upon them. Can you see the desolation coming upon Babylon? It says for us to flee in three different places, in Revelation and other places. Is it time? Where do we flee to? There will be a second exodus. All right? All right, the key to the bottomless pit will be open, and Hasatans will be released. I mean, spirits and dark demonic specters and shit down are already released. And they run around and they possess people. So these publicly announced that the signal foreshadowed the desolation that was coming upon them. Besides these, a few days after that feast, on the 21st day of the month, Artemisus Jar, well, let me read the note, Artemis Jar, oh no, there's no note, a certain prodigious and incredible phenomenon appeared. Some spectacular phenomenon appeared. Let me get that month for you. What month is that? Jar Artemis in the Cyril Macedonian name and the Roman name April and May. This happened. A certain prodigious and incredible phenomenon appeared. I suppose. The record of it would seem to be a fable were it not related by those that saw it and were not the events that followed it of so considerable of a nature as to deserve such signals, signs, marks, symbols. For before sun setting, chariots and troops of soldiers and their armor was seen running about among the clouds. Hmm. Huh. So there was a signal uh, before the sun setting, chariots and troops of soldiers and their armor were seen running about among the clouds and surrounding of cities. However, at the feast, which was called Pentecost, as the priests were going by night into the inner court of the temple. It seems to be the court of the priests. As their custom, their way, their practice was to perform, to do the duties, um, they, their sacred ministrations, they said that in the first place they felt a quaking 
They felt an earthquake. They were missing <coughs> these signs. All right. Um, let's read it again. They said they felt a quaking, a shaking, and heard a great noise. Was it a trumpet or a great noise or a roar? And after that, they heard a sound as of a great multitude, a great crowd, saying, Let us remove hence. Let us um, leave here. All right. Um, let us remove, depart, escape from here. But what is still more terrible, there was one, this guy named Jesus, the son of Annas, a plebeian and a husbandman, who for years before the war began, and at a time when the city was in very great peace and prosperity, success, came to the feast whereon it is our customary, our practice for everyone to make tabernacles. Mm. Some people are in a feast of tabernacles right now. And, well, some was in the Feast of Atonement. You got trumpets, atonement, tabernacles. A lot of people should be in tabernacles now. Going on to that eighth day. Um, so everyone to make booths, all right, to the Most High in the temple. All right, in the holy house, Jerusalem. Um, everyone to make tabernacles to the most high in the temple. All right, so I'm going to read the note real quick. It says, in this place, after the natural pronunciation and sense of Josephus, on this contrary to the opinion of a doctor, if Josephus should say that the Jews built booths or tents within the temple, at the Feast of Tabernacle, which is the latter rabbis will not allow to have been an ancient practice. But then, since it is expressly told us in Nehemiah 8 and 16 that in, that in still elder times, the Jews made booths or tabernacles in the courts of the house of the Most High at the festival, Josephus may well be permitted to say the same. And indeed, in modern rabbis, are of very small authority power in all such matters of remote and swift, remote history. All right. Um, to make tabernacles in the in the temple, and began on a sudden to cry aloud, a voice from the east, a voice from the west, a voice from the four winds, four, four corners of the earth, a voice against Jerusalem. And the holy house, a voice against the bridegrooms and the brides, and a voice against this whole people, population. This was his cry as he went around by day and by night in all the lands of the city. However, certain of the most eminent among the populace, the people, had great anger. So most of the rich among the people uh, had great anger at this dire cry of his and took up the man and gave him a great number of severe stripes they beat this man innocent man that did not that yet did not he either say anything for himself or anything peculiar to those that chastised him that beat him but still he went on with the same words which he cried before hereupon our ruler supposing as the case proved to be, that this was a sort of divine, because from the most high fury in the man, brought him to the Roman procurator, where he was beat till his bones were laid bare. Still did he not make any pray prayer for himself, nor shed any tears, but turning his voice to the most lab crying tone possible at every stroke of the whip. His answer was, Woe, woe to Jerusalem, and woe, woe to Babylon. And when 
Albanus, um, for he was then our procurator, asked him who he was and where he came and why he uttered such words. He made no matter of reply to what he said, but still did not leave off his melancholy ditty uh, still. Albanus took him to be a madman, crazy man, and dismissed him. Now, during all the time that passed before the war began, this man did not go near any of the citizens, nor was seen by them while he said so. But he every day uttered this cry, crying words, as if it were his uh, premeditated vow promised. Woe, woe to Jerusalem, America. Nor did he give ill words to any of those that beat him every day, nor good words to those that gave him food. But this was his reply to all men, and indeed no other than a mancali presage of what was to come. This cry of his was the loudest at the, at the festivals, the holy days, and he continued this ditty for seven years and five months without grow, growing hoarse or being tired with it with it until the very time that he saw his presage in earnest fulfilled in our attack when he when it ceased that's when he stopped for as he was going around upon the wall he was a watchman he cried out with his utmost force whoa whoa to the city to the bloody city and again to the city built on blood and to the people and to the holy house and righteous and just as he added at the end, Woe, woe, woe to myself also. There come a stone out of one of the engines. There came a stone out of one of the engines, the technology, and hit him and killed him immediately. He was basically he was shot or hit with a stone, a cannon. And as he was uttering the very same presages, he gave up the spirit. He died prophesying the downfall of Jerusalem. Now, if anyone consider these things, he will find that the Most High takes care of mankind by all ways possible, for shows to our race what is for their safety, preservation. But that man die by those miseries which they madly and voluntarily bring upon themselves. For the Israelites... By demolishing the Tower of Atonia, had made the temple four square, while at the same time they had it written in their sacred oracles that then should their city be defeated, as well as their holy house, when once their temple should become four square. But now, what did most alleviate them in undertaking this war? was an ambiguous oracle that was also found in the sacred writings, the ancient writings of the prophets, how about that time one from their country should become governor, ruler of the habitable earth. The Jews took this prediction to belong to themselves in particular. They were wrong. It's important to be right and have discernment. The Jews took this prediction to belong to themselves in particular, and many of the wise men were thereby fools. They were deceived. This president is going to bring uh, all the Jews together and um, create peace. Well, the scripture says, when there's peace, when they talk about peace, peace, then there's sudden destruction. So, um, they thought that, uh, that there was going to come a time, one from their country, their own countrymen, should become governor of the whole earth. Right? Then I mean, um, false prophets, um, you know, these people think they did a holy comforter and all this stuff. They think that they, they David reincarnated and all these things. 
Anyway, the Jews took this prediction to belong to themselves in particular, and many of the wise men were thereby fooled in their determination. Now this oracle certainly announced the government of Vespasian, a heathen. That wasn't an oracle of an Israelite ruling. It was an oracle denoting Vespasian to rule, to be Caesar or Titus, you know, to be a Caesar, who was appointed emperor in Judea. It was unto their destruction. Things got to get worse before they get better. So the people desired a king. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. The, the, the people desire a king. They don't want to be ruled by the Most High. They don't want the Most High to come back. Why do you think they got Space Force and weapons out in space? Right? They don't want Christ to come back because he's the child born with the kingdoms on his shoulder. He's going to take down all the kingdoms. And he's going to give out crowns. Right? Right? And the earth is going to be given to the righteous. Right? The elder shall show the younger. Right? And so, he's going to give out crowns and palm branches. And they're going to sing songs. Hosanna, Hosanna. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The Lord of war, the Lord of military armies. He's going to tell you to worship his father. Uh, anyway. Um, so Vespasian was an appointed emperor in Judea. Right? However, it is not possible for man to avoid fate the future, although they see it beforehand, the future. But these men interpret some of those signals or signs according to their own pleasure. I had a dream. All right. Um, by their emotions. That's why a woman's going to ride the beast. They need equality. They think a woman should rule. When Paul said a woman should be silent in the church and not usurp authority over men. Don't be surprised when you see somebody riding that, riding the beast. Right? Um, uh, according to their own pleasure. And some of them they utterly despised until their madness was shown both by the taking of their city by civil war going on and them making war with the heathen um, and their and their own destruction their own demise they bring their own demise upon themselves So that's it. That's all I got. I think, I think that's all I got there. And there's more to that. Um, um, Revelation 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And I saw, as it were, the sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. We're going to have the victory over what? His image, over his mark, his sign, his number. Over his name, because the Most High's name is above all names, right? 
And standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, he saw the righteous. All right? And they singing the songs of Moses, the servants of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, of Christ, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, your deeds. Most High Power, Almighty, just and true are your ways. You King of Saints, who shall not fear you, O Mahaya, and glorify your name, Most High, for you only are holy. For all nations, all people shall come and worship before you. For they, for your judgments are made manifest. They are revealed. They are shown. And after that, I looked and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven. The, the tabernacle of the, of the testimony in heaven was open shown and the seven angels came out of the temple the gate was open having the seven plagues clothed in pure clothed in pure and white linen pure and white apparel and having their breasts girded with golden girdles and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels and seven gold vials full of the anger of the Most High, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory, the honor of the Most High. And from his power, from the worship, the praise of the Most High, and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple. So the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And those plagues will be fulfilled. All right. So we just got to trust the most high. And um, hold on. Keep the faith, hold fast to that which is good, keep his laws, and trust them. It, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the Most High's faithfulness. The Most High is my portion. Said my spirit, therefore will I hope I have faith in him, not religion. I have faith in the Most High. The Most High is good unto them that wait for him. You got to wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. He's good also to the soul that searches for him. It is good that a man should both hope, have faith, and quietly be patient. And wait for the salvation of the Most High. Wait for His protection. Wait for Him to defend you. If you trust Him, He will defend you. Alright. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth of Babylon. Still, ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember, the most hard, far away, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. Let the new Jerusalem come into your mind. All right. All right. Um. Um. Hang on. 
while the new Jerusalem is coming down. All right. But look, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array. They're going to be ready against her. From then, from there, she will be taken. Their arrows will be as of a mighty expert man, a destroying man. None shall return in vain. No shots that are going to be fired are going to return. They ain't got no place to return to. Once they go forward, that's it. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, filled with, with treasure, says the Most High. Because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O you destroyers of my heritage, my children. Because you have grown fat, you have grown rich as the heifer, the cow at grass, that red heifer at grass, and bellow as bulls. The judgment of Babylon is going to happen in one hour. And that's all, folks. All right. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, says the Most High, so shall no man abide there. Neither shall any son of man live there. Behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance, and they are cruel and will not show mercy. For their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array, ready like a man to the battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon, he has heard the report. He has heard the Israelite prophesying on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, by word of mouth, in front of the White House, in front of all their idols because they're on all their idols is going to be a visitation in all their cities the king of babylon have heard the report of them that are going to come from the north and his hands wax feeble he don't know what to do he's scared he's shaking he's bluffing anguish took hold of him and pangs pain labor as of a woman that's in labor, childbirth. All right. So we're going to see a lot of shaking and a lot of fear come upon Babylon as we get closer. All right. Vengeance is the Lord. May the Most High have vengeance.